Okay, what's going on, everybody? Welcome, 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 welcome. My name is Nate, lawyer slash YouTuber, and a lot of, you know, it's going around that. Oh, no audio. Hold on. No audio. Can you guys not hear me? Let me make sure my audio is working. Audio, audio. Test, test, test. Okay, so you guys do hear me. Somebody was saying the audio wasn't wasn't fine. All right. So we are now about to get busy. So what's everybody here for? I know what everybody's here for. You are here to see the restraining order against Steve McRae. So we are about to get into that. But first, we're going to go over a couple of things. Let's check this out. Mm. So first, before we get into the actual restraining order, and I know there's going to be people out there, oh, Nate, do you have the restraining order? What's it look like? Blah, blah, blah. So let me just show people what we're going to be looking at in a second. Let me pull this up. Yeah, I'm moving slow. Oh, thanks for the new for the new new member, Gene. Thank you. Thank you. Now, before I get I get too far sidetracked now. All the documents that I'm about to show you now have already been released to members and the members only. So just go to the members only community, go to the community tab. If you're a member, you can see all these documents and they're all glory. So, you know, it's all going to be released. I'm also going to be releasing documents later so everybody can have it. I want to thank, um, I want to thank everybody for stopping by. So if you're a member, you get access to these documents. And from now on, whenever I do anything like this and I have these documents, I'm going to release them to the members, you know, right before I go live so you guys can see them and go through them with me. So um, for all the members, thank you. And thank you to my new members who, who just joined. Um, Gene, is that Welsom? Gene Welsom, thank you. Thank you for joining. And I think there's some, some members who joined earlier too. Um, also, if you are a member, you also get to see the Steve, our talk about atheism, the full three hour talk. That's also for members. So, you know, I've been giving up the members a lot of, um, of perks. So yeah, if you join the channel, join the membership, you got it. You just got here, Hawk Tie. Well, we're just starting out. All right. So let me first um, screen share the document so you guys can see what, the, what, what we're talking about. So I am showing you these are the documents that we're going to be looking at. This is the ex parte restraining order that was granted um, for harassment. For harassment. So we have, it, it seems like we're going to have a lot to talk about, guys. We're going to have a lot to talk about. But before we get there, before we get there, uh, just a couple of the ground rules first. If you want to ask me a question, as you can see, that chat is on fire. So hit me with a super chat if you really, if you want me to answer your question. If, if you want to just take a chance and hopefully I see something, that's fine too. But, you know, super chats are probably going to be the best way that I'm going to get it. Thank you, Secret Squirrel. Thank you. C Spurge for becoming members. Members are coming in the hot. Head to the community cab and look at that. Thanks, Nat. <laughs> Nana, thanks again for becoming a member. Again, all the documents that you see here on the screen are already posted to members, so they already have access to these documents. So again, if you have a question that you want me to ask, ask answer, the best way to get it to me is through Super Chat. You can put it in a regular chat, but it's gonna, just going to be hard to find. I'm also going to say thank you to all my mods. Um, I, I don't say that enough. You guys are really, really great. So uh, you guys have now probably tired of me just saying nothing and drinking my tea. Ah, Tadit, new member. Thank you, Tadit. Four night Tadit's new member. And this is $4.99. Appreciate the work as always. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Diane for a five dollar super chat. All right. So let's talk about restraining orders. Mm. Put up my little notes here. Now, first, what is a restraining order? A restraining order is simple, right? It's something that says you have to stop doing something. Now, you could have a legal right to do that or you could be doing something that's kind of, you know, not, you don't have the legal right to do. But it, what, what it does, it tells you, you cannot do something. You're restrained from doing something. And in this particular instance, we have what is called a harassment restraining order. Now, two things that you got to know straight up. This is not legal advice. If you need legal advice, 
go see an attorney in your area. This is me, who is not an attorney from Minnesota. I'm from New York. Looking at what's been presented and just giving you my opinion on it. So if you're looking at this for legal advice, you're in trouble. I've said this in all my videos, but this is not legal advice. We got through that. Somebody says this is legal advice, you're in the wrong place. So um, a restraining order is, again, just telling somebody they can't do it. Now, examples of that is harassing a stalker. If you're harassing a some stalker, somebody, you get a restraining order to stop doing that. Or if you have like a work project, like, you know, if, like um, sometimes you'll see that in companies. One company uh, asked for another company to restrain from doing something because they had an agreement and somebody broke the agreement. You can see that. But it's in other words, the court saying you can't do this. Now, this is a harassment restraining order. And it's interesting because this restraining order to me, seems to be a temporary restraining order. Now, what's the difference? Now, temporary restraining order, I used to deal with these all the times when I was at the prosecutor's office. Anytime you had a victim of a crime, um, um, and when you, when you had a crime where there was a victim, we would always ask the court to issue a restraining order against the perpetrator for the victim. And that's just to make sure that, you know, there was no, you know, I, I saw the victim at work or something like that. And we had to come. No, no, no. We want them to stay away. So we issue a restraining order as, as part of our course of work to make sure that that victim is protected from that perpetrator. You can't go but so so close to this to, the, to this person. So that's and our restraining orders were 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 particularly for the crime. Now they lasted. They could last from anything from six months to two years, and sometimes you can even get one for fifty years, but depending on the circumstances. But this restraining order is not. Uh, temporary restraining order, even though it seems to act that way. When I looked up the Minnesota statutes and, and things, it looks that way, but it's not. This is this isn't this is a it's called a harassment restraining order. And let me get into the details of it. Now, this is what I, this is again. This is me looking up Minnesota law about these type of. So the standard that has to be put in place to get this order is the court must reasonably believe that a party has been harassed, right? So. So in that instance, you usually have um, a certain amount of time to now bring forth the evidence that says, hey, this is what's happened and I have been harassed. So, so the party brings forth that evidence and the court has to determine whether, you, whether it's reasonable to believe that you've been harassed. And usually it has to, the judge is only hearing from one side. So this temporary restraining order strains the party and it's effective immediately. And the judge is only hearing from one side. So both sides aren't presenting a case. One side is coming forward and said, I'm being harassed. And here's the evidence. Now, one of the key factors, it seems to be, is that there has to be this immediate and present danger of harassment before the court issues this order. And it seems like that hurdle was reached because the judge actually issued this order. And, um, and it's, it's interesting because it's a it's a weird little twist that they have here where in well I'll, I'll just read it it's in this jurisdiction if a person the person who is being harassed or if the person who's being restrained from harassing someone they can also request a hearing on the merits to get this order terminated but they have to do that within the first 20 days after being processed after being serviced so let me go back to the chat to make sure I'm not missing any questions I got a 499 super chat I missed um, debate me on the definition of restraining order. <laughs> that is Steve McCarran. <laughs> Thanks for the five dollars super chat. Okay, so so now I'm, I'm hoping this kind of gets everybody on the same page where we're at when it comes to this type of restraining order. Now, the last thing I want to tell you about these these types of restraining orders, which is interesting, is that, um. The final restraining order, if, if you get if this becomes a final restraining order, um, but again, I'm not sure the wording in Minnesota, but if this becomes a final restraining order, um, then it can last generally up to two years. And if Steve or the person who's the orders against violates the order, um, I think if you violate it twice or more than twice, the order can be extended for 50 years. So 50 years if you violate the order to, it says, let me see, if, if respondent violated a prior order or existing order on two or more occasions. So it seems like the three strike rule, you're out. You violate it twice, then you, it can be, it can last up to 50 years. So that's kind of, now again, this is a quick and dirty, just trying to understanding of the, of this type of, this special type of um, 
a restraining order because there are different types. There's family court orders, there's civil, there's criminal. But this is this is this isn't seems to be known as a harassment restraining order. All right. Any jobs, any jobs, any jobs, any jobs, anything. No. OK, so now we've talked about the restraining order. Now let's talk about how it involves the Violence Against Women's Act. Now, generally, um, from my understanding of law, and it's interesting because I had to look this up and I had to actually do some research on this point. Generally, when, when, you, when you want to sue someone, you have to sue them in the jurisdiction that they're in. So uh, let's say, for instance, in the non-sex suit, Steve had to sue Kyle in Kyle's home state. So he had to travel across country and sue Kyle in his home state because that court had authority over Kyle to tell Kyle what to do. He couldn't sue him in, let's say, Nebraska or something like that, or you couldn't sue him in Alaska because that those courts didn't have jurisdiction over Kyle. Kyle didn't live there. So that's kind of what you need. You need, you need to have some type of jurisdiction over the party. But this is a little different. And how does it play with the Violence Against Women Act? Well, Congress, in passing the Violence Against Women Act, passed a whole bunch of provisions. Some of those provisions have expired, some of them have not, but one of the provisions is the full faith and credit position um, provision under the Violence Against Women Act. Now, again, this is a general understanding. What that means, that means um, if someone gets a restraining order in one state, that restraining order is good against the person in any state, as long as they have reasonable notice of it. So. Here, if you get a restraining order in New York against someone in California, and you and that restraining order is taken out under the provisions of this of the um of the the Violence Against Women's Act, and it's and it's under this um this clause for the um for the full faith and credit, then this act this 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 restraining order is good in all fifty states. So now, if Steve, who lives in California, violates the act in California. It, it, it it's it's still just like as if he violated it where the at where it was where it was made. So that is how they were able to get around this jurisdictional issue. And from what I'm understanding, I'm, I'm not sure about the details, but Steve's attorney in Carolina was served, which is which is pretty interesting. Which is which Steve lives in California, but they serve the but his attorneys here, so they serve his attorneys, knowing that he actually got it, and then now Steve. So. From my understanding now, when we look at the order, we'll see what the restrictions are, what type of order it is, and look at some of the evidence that was put forward to that people say, okay, this is it. So let me now pull up the order without teasing it to death anymore. So here is the order. Now, the order obviously has been redacted for multiple reasons. We want, don't, don't want to put too much information out there. I'm going to put the full screen so everybody can see the order. And let's get into it. Oops. I want to rotate you. All right. Just want to make this big enough. I believe everybody can see that wonderful order. All right. So let's just get into the document and see what's actually going on. All right. So this is Paulson versus Stephen McRae. And now this is an ex parte order granting a petition for harassment for a harassment restraining order. Ex parte means so the, judge, the court is only hearing from one party, not hearing from both sides. So since they're not hearing from both sides, this is ex parte. Now, based on the petitioner's affidavit and the petition for harassment restraining order and other information provided to the court, the court finds. So the court has found this based on the evidence provided by KJP. There is an immediate and present danger of harassment to justify temporary relief. That is the order from the court. They have found that there is an immediate and present danger of harassment to justify temporary relief. Now, when you see all these, these check marks, this is what the court is checking that they found. First, there are reasonable grounds to believe that the respondent, Steve McRae, has engaged in harassment, which has or has in, intended to have a substantially adverse effect on the safety, security, or privacy of petitioner, Katie Joe Paulson, or minor children or wards of petitioner by committing the following acts. So let's look. They put followed, monitored, or pursued the petitioner online, made harassing phone calls, or sent harassing text messages to petitioner, frightened the petitioner, or threatening behavior, 
stole property from petitioner, intellectual property, and used social media to harass petitioner. This is what the evidence, the court saying, based on the evidence they had, these are their findings. Let me go to let me go back to the chat to see if there's any questions. Again, if you guys are going to ask me questions, I got to go back and forth from the chat. So if you're going to ask questions, just make sure you hit me with a super chat because it's going to be hard for me to scroll or try to tag me. But in StreamYard, sometimes it's hard to see the tags. So just let me know. But so right now, what do we know? We know that KJP went to a judge and said, here's the evidence of harassment, right? And the judge looked at that and said, yes, I believe these are the evidence of these harassments, blah, 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 blah. So the, that, this is what the court, the judge looked at it and has said, this, this, is, this is what I'm finding. And I believe this is enough to restrain Steve McRae from doing this anymore. It's powerful stuff. All right. Let's move on. I think somebody had a quick question. I thought I saw my name here. Is that you, Heretic? Am I looking? I'm looking. I'm looking. Ah, sorry. I missed it. It's growing too fast. All right. So let's continue on with the document. It is ordered. So now this is the judge saying what, I'm, what he's ordering. The request for temporary relief is granted. So Steve is now based on this document, when he's eventually served with it, which, which he says he has been, he now is restrained from doing blah. Respondent shall not harass petitioner. Steve can't harass her anymore. Respondent shall have no direct or indirect contact with petitioner. Now that's important because if Steve is telling other people to, to contact KJP or is telling his troll group and all those people to now harass this woman, that's violating this order. You're in trouble. You got to be careful what you're doing. Now he's got to be very, very careful, especially since he's now gotten it. You can't now tell people or, or engage people saying, go go get Katie Joy because you're violating a court, a court order. That's what this means. That's indirect contact. Um, they didn't grant the minor children one, but again, you guys can see this all. If you're a member, you already have these documents, so you can see this. Um, B. The relief granted does not extend to petitioners, my husband or minor child. So this is just between Steve and KJP. But if he's not careful, he could he could extend to those people. Respondent is prohibited from being within five miles of petitioner's home. And obviously that's redacted. Petitioner's address is confidential. Respondent, and if he learns of the address, he can't be within the five miles of it. So that's that's just it. This next box is checked. The restraining order is effective and effective until 6-1-22. So this restraining order is effective for two years unless changed by later court order. So remember Steve, and now it's going to tell you, Steve has 20 days to request an, a hearing to say that this order is no good. So the clock is ticking, I think, from the dead. So in 20 days... Steve has to ask the court to vacate this restraining order or it's good for two years. And what else is good? So, so wow. So he is restrained from two years. The court administrator should send a copy of the following to engage with the sheriff's department. So now they send it to the police department and all this other stuff. The respondent, how many other ordinances shall and shall not comply. So these are other things. Um, here's number eight, which I think is interesting. It is not a violation of this order if the parties pursue or participate in voluntary mediation. So they're allowing you to, to talk to each other, you know, you don't, you know, to get around the order. So if you guys want to mediate, you guys can do this. The sheriff of any county of Minnesota or peace officer shall have the duties relating to the service of this order without charge to the petitioner. So in other words, you know, she gives it to the sheriff and they serve the person if they're in state. I'm not sure how this will work in California, but obviously Steve has been served. They served as attorney, so you don't really have to worry about that. Respondent is refrained, is restrained. Again, it's restraining order from harassing, start stalking, or threatening protected person, KJ, KJP, or engaging in other content that would place the protected person, KJ Joe Paulson, in a reasonable fear of bodily injury to that person, and is prohibited from use or attempted use or threatening use of physical force against the protected parties. That would reasonably, that would reasonably expect to cause bodily injury, and we're here at notices. If a hearing is scheduled and the respondent does not attend the hearing, harassment order may be granted. 
failure for responder to appear. So now that they're going through what happens if he doesn't appear, any conduct of violation, um, of section constitutes. All right, so this is important for Steve. Any conduct, any conduct by the respondent, that's Steve, in violation of this specific provisions provided in section one above constitutes a violation of the harassment restraining order. A police officer shall arrest without a warrant and take him to jail if a police officer believes the respondent has violated this restraining order and shall hold respondent in jail for at least 36 hours, excluding the day of arrest, Sundays, legal holidays, unless the respondent is released earlier by a judge or judicial officer. Now, this is interesting. Let me go make sure. Hold on. I'm sorry. I got, I got a super chat. But this is interesting because if he violates this order, he, he could go to jail for, for a day, a little bit over a day. This is insane. Let me get the, let me get a couple of these super chats. I see a super chat came in. All right. $5.99. Aussie, Aussie Trish. Was it Trisha? Um, please slow down the chat. <laughs> there are almost 300 here. All right. I'll, I'll try to slow it. I have to slow down the chat next chat next time. I'm so sorry. Um, so is he, oh, this is from Flying Monkey, 50 bucks. Hey, thanks, Flying Monkey. I appreciate it. Thanks for the super chat. Great. Wow. Ooh, big money. So if he stays admin of the troll group, is that a violation? Likely probably will be. Likely probably will be. But we haven't gotten here yet. Ah, fly monkey, you hit me hard early, but don't worry. Oh, and, and I think we, we had a new member. Nikki P, thank you for becoming a member. And again, for all you people who are who are members, just go to the community tab. All these documents are listed there. So you guys got them all. Just check it out. Let me make sure I go to. Um, now, also, too, there's a question that came in about, well, since he lives in California, don't forget, because of the full faith and credit clause, this is a legitimate order. And if Steve violates it in California, they can arrest him and hold him under this order. So it, so it doesn't allow him freedom. This order is in effect in California. Full faith and credit clause. Um, and I'll, I'll show you guys uh, the law for that. So. Let's continue to let's, let's continue to look at the order. Um, violation of harassment order may be treated as a misdemeanor, gross misdemeanor, or a felony. A misdemeanor may violate in a sentence up to ninety days in jail or a thousand dollar fine. Some repeat violations or gross misdemeanors may result in a sentence up to one year in jail or a three thousand fine. Other vi other violations are are felonies and may result in a sentence of imprisonment up to five years or a ten thousand dollar fine. A person may engage in a pattern of harassment conduct, is guilty of a felony and a sentence and should be sentenced to imprisonment for up to 10 years and a $20,000 fine. Federal law may prohibit the shipping and transporting of a firearm, blah, 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 and it's signed by the sign and dated by the judge. And this is copy for petitioner, copy for respondent, copy to sheriff. And these are, this is the information that KJP put forth in her document that also um, the evidence. So this is the listing of the sealed documents. Now, the documents are sealed, the evidence is sealed, but the listing of the documents are not sealed. So let's look at that. Exhibit A, screenshots of McCray's accusations. So there's some screenshots of accusations that McCray, that McCray made that were exhibit one. Um, exhibit B, Facebook page entitled without a freaking clue. You're an admin of that. That's the exhibit they used and you're still an admin. I think you may have a problem. Maybe a violation of the order. You need to leave that group immediately. Immediately. You know what? Let, let me ask a question. Who? Oh, do I have any more? Do, was that? Did I miss something? Did I miss something? Oh yes. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. If I'm missing your super chats, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna go scroll. I think I found one. I saw one. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Angry Roach, my brother. I thought Carl was going to get gel. <laughs> I did too. I did too. Oh, th th this this has also been been, been um 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 can given given to Kyle. Um, so I think you know it may help him in his in his particular um case. But we'll see. Angry Roach again. What if Steve lies with someone 
um, that own firearm or he lives with lives, whether he lives with someone who owns firearms, that may be, you know, that, that's all up to California. You know, can you have a restraining order in California? You know, that I, I, I wouldn't know. But I know here in New York, as soon as you get a restraining order, your guns and stuff got to go. You know, yeah, they, they, we don't, they don't play that here in New York. You gotta go. Yeah, I put lives, but it lives. <laughs> hey, it's Black Lives Matter. It's the same word. I'm, that that's also on my mind. Listen, if you guys hear the siren and stuff outside, it's it's been going crazy. So New York is just like under siege. It's it's, it, it's incredible. But you know, you got to do what you got to do. You know, it's it's it, it is what it is. You know, people. You know, at, eventually. I think we have to just confront the racism with it is. So, but that's a sidebar. Let's get back to the document because you guys didn't come come here for that. You guys came here to see this. All right. So the ad. So since he's the admin of the so exhibit B is the without a freaking clue. Judge saw that and was like, "Hey, hold on. This looks like a harassment group." All right. Exhibit C. Handful of things posted or said by Steve McCrae, a harass petition petitioner. So all that stuff he's posted and said about KJP, the whole you know months and months of. That's in there too. And there's some November 2019 screenshots. So this evidence was so much that the judge said she's been harassed and he needs to be stopped immediately. So what do you think? So Steve McRae is now barred <laughs> harassing KJP for two years. And do you think Steve is now going to go to Minnesota to fight this? This is crazy. And I believe he's still in the group. He's still in the, in the troll group against the court order. Ah, you couldn't write. You couldn't. You couldn't make this shit up. All right. Um, did the judge go? <laughs> sad. Did the judge go to Nuke School? Check Nate. Not an atheist. Nate's lamp twenty twenty. Yes. Boom. The lamp. The lab. Thanks, thanks for the super chat, Tadid. So yeah, so 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 we have. So this was um, this is insane. This was insane. I, I I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how do you guys feel about this. This this is this is wild. So what I'm going to do, everybody in the drag Discord, I'm going to give people some chance to come in and speak their mind because I have another. 20 20 minutes or a half hour um before I end the stream. So if you want to if you want to get us on here, just send me a message. Um, you can send it to me on Discord and I will send you the link. Um, let me make sure I'm up on Discord. Um, and you can definitely come inside here and we can talk about this for a couple of minutes. Copy. I was trying to reach you, reach out to you earlier, exiled. Where, where, where you been? All right, so I'm in Discord now that I posted the link there before, but maybe I did not. So if those are who are in Discord, I am putting this in the welcome, not the welcome, the open drama talk. So the link, link, link to this is an open drama. So you guys have it. There's also a new mention I have. And it is in drag text. Boom. So you guys now can can watch it but let's take a poll do you believe first the first question is do you believe steve has 20 days right 20 days to challenge this or this order stays for two years do you think steve is going to go to court in the next 20 days and challenge it one for yes two for no i'm putting it two because i don't think i don't know if, if you're going to have the money to go and challenge this in court Right, I don't know. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting, but one for yes, two for no. I, I don't I just I don't think he's gonna challenge it. At Nate Brody, will the courts check the IP address and other accounts? Maybe, maybe. I, I, they can, they can. I, I've done it before. I've done it before, they, but they can. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people fail to realize that they they think they're hidden online, but. A quick, a quick, you know, a quick thing to Google and you're found out. Um, Ruhef. Ru will Ruhef pay now for Steve to fight a case in Minnesota, too? Ah, that's going to be crazy. This is phony B2 Maniacs. Question, does Steve have to sign this or does it come in when it came? No, this is, it's, it's ex parte order. So as long as you have enough evidence to show this was good, you don't have to sign it. You don't have to, the abuser doesn't have to sign it. They just have to present it. 
And if the judge finds there's enough evidence, then you're stopped at that particular point in time. Let me bring in my first guest, Excel. What's up? Hey, hi. Sorry for the bad mic. How are you guys doing? I have just one question. Thanks for that. On. Let me just thank thank Super Beetle, um, Phony Beetle Mayx yeah. for the for the five dollars super chat. Go ahead. You're 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 on now. I'm sorry about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I heard recently that Steve was um, talking on a stream about how he and all of his roommates have firearms. So is this going to be a problem for Steve, or did you already address that? No, I, I, I don't know. I know here in New York, that is absolutely a problem. If you not have a restraining order, then you cannot legally have a firearm. You know, it, it, that's one of the things. You got to turn over all your guns and stuff. Um, but I don't know how it works where he's at. Maybe they may be more, more conservative. Maybe, you know, so you know, I just don't know. I know here, yes, give them up. There, I'm not sure. So, but we'll see. We'll see. I know the, the the things that I that if I was Steve, I'd be concerned about is um, that troll group, for instance. You know, he he's you know, even though they don't call it a troll group, if you're still an admin in the group and it's been mentioned in the damn order that restrains you, what are you doing? Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? yeah. And and not only that, like he's done the most crazy things. Like he's gone into, he's had like members of this. I don't know. I don't even know what to call them. Um, his following. You go into um, a private Facebook group where a bunch of people are talking about a medical issue that they all share in common and take screenshots, give them to Steve that he then puts on his Twitter. Okay. So not mm -hmm. only Katie's screenshots talking about her medical condition, but other people's names are in this too. And this is a private group, obviously, on a sensitive topic. Yeah. Yeah. So he's done stuff like this. And we've all been just sort of sitting back and watching it all along. It's so good that she finally slapped him down. Well, I, I just want to make it also very clear, too, is that Steve can't do that indirect contact anymore. He can't go tell Cheshire or somebody else, oh, go go say this about her. Because that, again, is violating the order. So, so, so all that, send the trolls after this person. If it can be linked back to Steve. Yeah, he's already, well, he's already done it. order. He's already done it. He did it last night. Oh my last god! Last night, I watching Uni Rock, and he's like, "Go tell Katie to present evidence of her claims, you know, her original, her original." You know, she has. She presented it to a court, and a judge said yeah, they're credible. Yeah. Right? She presented yeah. it to a court. Now, obviously, Steve has twenty days, or this is good for two years. So, is he gonna is he is he gonna fight back? Is he gonna go? I, I don't know. It's, it's 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 just an interesting. What do you think? Do you think he's gonna he's gonna make he's gonna make it happen? I think he'll fight it, but a, a decent person. If if they know that somebody wants no contact to that extent, where they go and they get a a restraining order against you, would we'll just stop doing it. But he's going to fight it. You know, he, he'll fight it. Does he have money to fight it? <laughs> you know, hey, what's up? Hey, drag not. What's going on? Drag not, Cynthia. <laughs> Let me make sure I got my hey, mic. Greg. Wow, what's going on, Exile? What's uh sorry I had to handle some some real life big brother stuff. Uh wow. <laughs> so I, I just like the irony here, the irony of the 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 actual harass because I didn't know until recently that Steve had excuse me, there are people who are in Steve's vicinity that are like sending screenshots uh, or, or actually like going by and like taking pictures of, of Katie's neighbors and kids and shit like that. Damn. I think, I think, and, and exile, you may know a little bit more about that. Is that something that's true? Yeah. From what I understand yeah. that's true. Yeah. That's stuff that you need. I've been, I've been picking all of this up from Unirock guys. I've been watching him. Have yeah, you, so. have, you better than me. You better. Yeah, than so, <laughs> I, you know, somebody else asked me to start watching Unirock. So I do. Um, he, um, Definitely showed that you know that the, the neighbors are involved. They there was a, actually a screenshot of the neighbors, the, the mother and father and their little boy walking in a park. They took a picture, and it, 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 they posted it up on Reddit with their complete docs and the kids' picture and everything. They, oh my god! Have, they have no sense. Like they're just they're out of their mind. I so. Mean, I don't even know who these people are. Yeah. So this this is this is what I find interesting. Like the second, so if because there's someone in Steve's orbit that's definitely afraid of me in real life and is has actually told people that I'm coming to his house and whooping his ass. 
Now, Ooh. it's interesting. That's it's red line. If y'all didn't what? know, <laughs> if y'all didn't know, that's red line. He's actually told people that, and so that's why he doesn't mention my name because he's actually afraid of me in real life. I've never said anything even close to that, but it's he's from Florida. So, but you have people like that. He's the one who Dr. Griffin, by the way. Uh, this Ooh. same this these same people feel that it's cool to do shit like that. But if I were to actually show up at somebody's house for doing some shit like that to my kid, then I'd be wrong. Right. Oh, yeah. You don't have to like Katie Joy. She ain't, you know what? She may not be the nicest person in the world. That's fine. Y'all know I'm going to be honest with people I don't like, but mm -hmm. there's a line. And yeah, the yeah. fact that Steve doesn't feel the need to go, look, I don't care how much y'all like me or don't like it. Here's the line in the sand that none of us are going to cross. Doesn't matter. Point blank. But he doesn't have the wherewithal to do that. And I absolutely agree that this sort of thing is necessary now because he needs to be shown that there's certain shit that's just not fucking cool, right? I go and I'll talk shit about G-Man, but I will tell people, don't go and fucking harass him, right? Mm -hmm. Don't do that shit. Yeah. And, but that's my responsibility. But he doesn't have that sort of thing. And so it's, it, I hope he does get fucking arrested, honestly, <laughs> because then, then that'll show him that. Been 36 he, hours in jail? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know what? He's going to physical fucking jail. You know, he probably does need that. And maybe well, he'll calm his ass down and I'll get some motivation and get an education, get a dead damn job. But, you know, but it's, 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 it's only for a few days. Hold yeah. On, hold, hold on. Let me, let, let me just do two quick things. I got two quick super chats I'm going to give out. This, um, this is from, what's it, Trio Monkey 666. This is just a shout out how awesome Nate is and how hard work Uni Rock put into this to expose Steve. Yeah, that's true. I'll be on Uni Rock tonight, Uni Rock 2 tonight. But yeah, that's that thank thank you. Thank you. It, it, it's you know, and, and thanks to um th and thanks to everybody who's who's in here too, because Steve is um Steve is gonna get himself put in jail. I don't know what's going on. Who's your buddy? <laughs> Five dollar super chat. I'm happy this is lamp. Is team Hannibal? Um, not, not we're doing teams. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. And that's a Jason mask. This Jason mask I've had for actually almost thirty years. I got this when I was a kid. And if you look at this, like a signature on it, that's the original person, not the not the mother who played Jason, but the original guy who dressed up and played Jason. That's his signature. And Jason one, I think Jason one and two. So, but thanks, but thanks, thanks for the stupid chat. Let me let me introduce Prolib. Prolib, what's going on? How's it How going? How's the Trump support thing going for you right now? <laughs> oh, <I'm laughs> <here>. um, <laughs> yeah, no, that's 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 bad too. Um, you know, speaking of Trump, it it is astonishing to me that even in the face of this restraining order, you you've got uh, Steve already uh, saying, "Oh, well, you know, I'm going to fight this," and he's already mentioned her two or three times. Uh, and then you've got all the supporters like, "Oh, well." Is this real? When does it go into effect? Like asking all these questions that are complete nonsense just to try to give Steve some cover. It's like, guys, there's this is under the Violence Against Women Act. This isn't just a normal restraining order. This is really serious. No one's no one's harassing Steve. No one's abusing Steve. This happened in a court of law. He's got 20 days to respond, but it's because of his conduct. Okay, nobody like went to a judge and was like, well, this lady's being mean. And the judge was like, violence against women act. Oh, yeah. Like, the, the, you me too like, activated. <laughs> <laughs> like, evidence was given to the judge, and the judge made a decision based upon the evidence. This wasn't just a thing that just happened one afternoon because a judge was cranky. Yeah. Um, that, that that's because there was a few there's a few boxes checked right and actually oh, yeah. I think an enumerated uh list of things at the bottom to show what she submitted to show that this is actually warranted which you you know that all of his fucking actually he has a, a an actual lawyer now with him too who's gonna uh probably argue with the, the judge for whatever <laughs> but that's fine sure but there there's there's an undeniable fact that there's been evidence to support the restraining order yes that's undeniable fact and she gave I that to the judge. You, I guarantee you that's going to be contested, which it should be. You should contest the evidence. But the way that it's going to be contested is that, well, it's not actually evidence rather than it's not substantial enough to sue to uh, be considered harassment. So that's what I predict is going to be the yep. angle from uh, the fucking 62 IQ club. 
Peace Jer- Jeremy Pace, Jeremy Pace, five dollar super chat. Um, Dragoons for life. Thank you, Jeremy, for the five dollar super chat. And there's another one that just came in. Um, oops, there's two more that just came in. Sorry to cut off the conversation. I just want to like to get these things done because I always I always hate when I forget them. This is from Stupid Horror Energy. Stupid Horror Energy. Even though I'm surprised you're here, I, I thought you hated us. But hey, we love you too, Stupid Horror Energy. You got a lot of energy. <laughs> Stupid Horror Energy. I'm, I'm stealing. I feel like I'm stealing Steve's person. Stupid Horror Energy. You, you, uh, she, you, she knows who she belongs to. Don't worry. Oh, oh no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got Radak. You, you've been Radak. It says a lot about someone. Who tries to fight it? I I, I definitely agree. So uh, I just I just cut you off, um, um, Exile. What were you saying? I'm sorry. I completely forget what I was going to say. So don't worry about it. Just go uh, on. Oh, I'll, oh, remember, okay. I'll remember it in a minute. Well, I got something on the same thing. Hello, Exile. My you. first smile this week uh, was from Les. He's saying, "What's up, Exile?" Go ahead. Go ahead, Prolet. Uh, um, the other night, of course, and this was was in the. Uh, was in the things that was submitted to the judge. Steve was on with David Silverman. This is like a, a week ago. And for those that don't know, um, David Silverman addressed this directly by saying, uh, I want to sexually harass her right now. That's a direct quote from Silverman towards what? Katie. He starts oh, saying yeah. penis over and over again. He says, I am sexually assaulting you right now. And then says, uh, well, if she's ever, if she ever watches this, then I've sexually harassed her. You gotta um, see this. Yeah, I did a whole stream on it the other night. It's it's everywhere. And and I am I am absolutely certain that that clip got to Katie Joy and was used in this case. Let's just say that. Um, And Unirock talked about it last night. I mean, I I don't have any kind of uh, secret information. Secret Um, evidence. Uh Oh, don't don't start with that. Let's not start with that. (laughs) And when we called them out on it, they're like, oh, well, that's not harassment. That's a joke. Uh, You know, everybody's just kidding here. Well, the judge didn't find it very funny. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Hannah Gubby <laughs> says, "What's the normative definition uh, <laughs> of harassment?" <laughs> I think we need to define define normative. Yeah, define normative and what is. And, is. Oh so my god! This is, this is interesting though. Look at exhibit. Um, or actually, no, 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 no. This does not have the the the. Isn't there a Reddit page too? That you know, they're, they're, they're also involved. The Reddit page, all that stuff is also yes, okay. So, is the Reddit page included in uh the exhibit A or or which or actually it may, it may be C? I'm not really sure. Well, don't don't forget the, the, the details of the exhibits are confidential, but I, I was told okay. that yes, the, 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 the Reddit and the problem is also too, there are other people who also could be given restraining orders and people and just and just so everybody's clear. Just because you're hiding behind a sock account doesn't mean you can be you you you, you can't be found. You know, hmm. there's IP addresses. They do this all the time. If you find a restraining order in your in it, you know, if you if you if you if a sheriff is handing you a restraining order and you're like, oh, uh, it was a sock account, it's still you. They can still get you. So just you know, I hope I hope people understand when it comes to restraining orders and harassment, it does get serious when it goes online. Be careful Go ahead. out there. Don't harass people in your sock accounts. So I think that it should be uh, uh, talked about at least, and or at least have a a good discussion on what constitutes harassment, because that's something that gets uh, tossed around quite often. Even G Man claims that uh, me making the same type of videos that he makes toward Black Hebrew Israelites constitutes harassment, and I would say, well, if if that's the case, then you and I are both guilty. I don't think so, uh, but maybe that's the case. So at the the line in the sand for me personally because i'm not sure what the law actually says mm-hmm. but as far as a personal line would be something to impact your life such as uh taking pictures of your neighbor's kids right which and or doxing them that has like real world consequences and so uh well, i think it's about safety i think it's about yeah. violating somebody's safety because if somebody, for instance, David Silverman, the other what we just talked about, if I call David Silverman out for that, I'm not harassing David Silverman. I'm not abusing David Silverman. No. I'm calling out abusive behavior. But if um, someone were to put out his address online and pictures of his children and say, yeah, you know, well, this is where he lives. Hint, hint. That's that's the line for me. So I, and I think people get that confused because they want an easy way to get people to stop. Uh, calling out abusive behavior. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I think there's a difference between harassment is a broad term in the sense of there's harassment that's not criminal. You know what I mean? 
Then you have kind of the criminal harassment we're talking about. You can harass somebody and it not not be criminal, right. but then but then you 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 have this element of criminal harassment, and that's the one we're we're talking about here. And I, and I and I think if you look at Steve going after her kids, Steve doing this, Steve doing that, the troll group, all that that is at a level of which now you're actually impeding the person's life. And the judge lists them out. You know, you're following a person online, you're creating this fake. It's like at that point, and then to provide the evidence to say this is what the person is doing. I think that's the line now. The line right. is, and the line is honestly, when the judge looks at it and says, oh shit, we need to get this guy to stop right now. Because that's what that order is. It's a get this guy to stop this now. Uh, is this type of order unique to um, uh, situations such as a, a, a male against a female? Uh, because this was, what I understand, under the purview of the Violence Against Women's Act. Because that seemed to play a big role in, in the expediency of this order. Well, I, I, from from what I'm understanding, again, I'm, I'm not an expert on the Violence Against Women's Act, but I, I know there are portions of it that are that that have to be reauthorized. But there's another portion of it that deals with um, offenders or harassers across state lines, because obviously that was a big issue um, when the Internet started coming on. You had somebody in California harass somebody in New York. So what they did was that generally you couldn't do that. Like if I lived in New York, I couldn't get to the person in California that's harassing me because the court didn't have. So what the, so what the federal government did was pass a statute with the in the Violence Against Women Act that allowed people who are being harassed in one state to to get other people who are in other states restrained. So that's what the Violence Against Women's Act applies here is that the judge is saying, well, you have a lawful order in Minnesota. That order is also lawfully enforceable in California. And that's how Steve got, got caught up. Hmm. So his, uh, I guess, recourse now is within the next 19 days is to uh, challenge it and to get it uh, rescinded uh, within that time frame. Or uh, I, from what I understand, it sticks for the next two years. Yeah, it's good. From what I'm understanding, it's good. It's already good for two years. If Steve mm -hmm. wants to get it stopped, he has to go and say, this is why this order is no good. Now, think about this. His attorney is in South Carolina or North Carolina. <coughs> I forget, forget which, which one. But that a lawyer may not be able to practice in Minnesota, right? That lawyer's going to have to go there to practice. So they got to figure out a way to practice. So, Or you may have to get another lawyer. Who's going to pay for that? Who's going to pay for Steve to go out there? Because he may have to testify. You know, what evidence he's going to show? So th there's a lot. It's just it's just not just showing up. You have he has to file the petition to say, yeah, I want to fight this. You know, is Ruhef going to pay for this? There is a lot going on here. For a two dollar super chat real from Kent Hovind CPA. I had to shower after the Silverman Cray video. Yeah, it, it was pretty bad. But but these are these are the things that Steve and think about this. Violating this order, there's a real consequence here. They could put his ass in jail for a day. Physical jail. You know? Yeah, like this is not bullshit. <laughs> yeah. you know? This is not bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was complaining about how easy it is for Kyle to be put in jail for his little bullshit that he was doing. Just right. imagine this when you got a court order that says, we're going to put you in jail if you don't leave this woman alone for two years. This is great. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, yeah. I, Shit I, I got real. It got real. Whenever you get a judge, it, get, it gets real. It gets real. I, 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 this, is, this is insane. This is insane. But I, th I think Steve was was getting to this point, and eventually he just According he just got to it. Uh oh, Wikipedia's that's Google listening to me. That's fascinating. So that's so so at the at the end of the day, do you guys think Steve is actually going to go fight this? Because he got of nineteen course days. Will. Of course, yeah, he will. he's going to try. Uh, yeah. But how? Uh, what money? Well, uh, what uh, I can hear Ruhi's wallet screaming. Help! Yeah. But, um, yeah. So actually, before I answer that, somebody had a question. Well, what if people close to uh, McRae, Red, 62 IQ, other trolls uh, are harassing uh, Katie Joy? And I think someone was asking her earlier in a way. So the proxies that Steve has, uh, are would they be culpable if they continue to participate in, in the harassment? Say that one more time. So, there's something so, about that. Yes, there is. Yeah. There's something about the associations that he's. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um. Well, for for us again, I'm I, just just to be clear, I'm I'm not. Um. This is not legal advice. I'm not. You know, Minnesota law. It's a lot going on in Minnesota all of a sudden. So I'm just, I just want to stay stay clear. I'm not good with Minnesota law, but what the way the way it works here, the way I generally understand it, is that uh, when when these orders first initially start. That's what the person does, gets their mother or their friend to go contact the protected party. 
So what this, what this order doesn't allow is that Steve to do that. Steve to indirectly contact or harass Katie through third parties. And if it's a, and it's found that he did that, that's still a, that's also a violation of the order. Good. I got a five to four dollars super chat from Pigs in Space. I paid good money to see SM try to explain to Ruhef why he needs to pay for his defense. That's true. I would love to see that. I called Ruhef out. He was in the dragoon there when I was in there. And I was like, what's Ruhef doing in here? I called him out because it was at the height of that last ordeal with, with Katie, Joy, and Steve. And I'm like really super disturbed watching this shit that they're doing to her. When you, you have know, doxing people and, and all this crap, yeah. I when called him out. Anglers, it, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. That's it. I'm just, that's all oh. I was to say. I, it, you know, I called him out. He didn't even reply, but I, I, I don't know. Like, what's wrong with this guy's head? Well, I think there it may be an emotional attachment because Steve purposely got close to Ruhif knowing his medical situation. Uh, if people don't know why Ruhif's doing that, Steve purposely targeted him because he knew he had money. Uh, Steve can contest that all he wants, but the truth is there. Steve has openly talked about it. Uh, what Steve doesn't talk about is that he used to talk to me about how loaded Ruhif is and how good of an asset he'll be in the future. But if Ruhif wants to be used like that, that's on him. Um, so having someone like Ruhif enable him financially and having other people who don't really have a moral compass to go out and do the things that he won't do himself, well, then what motivation, what incentive is there for him to actually check his behavior in any way, shape or form other than having legal recourse? So now that uh, there's a risk that he may go to jail for his actions, physical jail, uh, now this will be the bulwark because the people around him have failed him because they lack integrity. Yeah, but but this also, you know, the the I always I always tell clients the messed up part about something like this is the fact that you know other people who are still harassing this woman, if they get tied to you, you're fucked. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's the problem now. Now he's got to be concerned about the troll group still trolling her because if they still troll her and she says, well, they, they work for Steve McRae and it's found out that they do, then Steve McRae, you know, he gives me spending what 36 hours in jail and. And 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 I don't want to 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 uh, I want to make sure this point is 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 understood clearly. The the standard is that there needed to be an immediate and present danger of a mat of harassment to justify this this order. The judge found that. The judge found that there was an immediate and present danger of harassment based on the evidence that he had. That's pretty substantial. That's like not that's not a nothing thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's pretty substantial. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about immediate danger to this woman of being harassed by Steve McRae. The judge found it and ordered him to stop. Yeah, this was, like I said, this wasn't just some radical judge that was having a cranky day. There's, there, there were, there are multitudes of evidence. There, there, there is a lot of different things, different types of communications, different uh, uh, modes and mediums. So, the, you know, uh, over a period of time as well. This is this wasn't just a single instance of of these mediums. So, uh, yeah, this Steve has to go prove that none of it was harassing, all all of it that all of it was hara that wasn't harassing. That's what Steve has to go to the court and prove. I I don't think that's going to happen. Or it wasn't. Or or it's out of context because I, or, I right. places sure. where where okay you know yeah this, this, I I said this out of context or this wasn't harassment because right now the judge. Technically, it's only hearing from one side. It's only hearing from KJP's side and the evidence that she has. So there could be more context that's missing. And that's why they give him 20 days. Hey, you got 20 days to come tell us that, that we're wrong. So if he does, I just don't know if he's going to do it. But it's going it's, it's, it's a hell of a thing to see. Uh, Hannah, Joy D is asking a good question in the chat. You should have wrote the question then. Okay. Yeah, miss, I, I, he's saying that VAWA is expired in 2019. I think Jerry yeah. is that, yeah. it. Well, yeah, it the, it is expired. Uh, the Violence Against Women Act had expired. It's supposed to be reauthorized. But the piece about the um, the the um, full faith and credit clause doesn't seem to be expired. Um, it's still it's still in effect, and the, the full the full faith credit clause of um, of the amendment. But I'll check it out though. But this order was sent to Stephen, and, and it's still good, I believe, under that under that um, provision. But again, we'll we'll you know check it out. I'm, I, but I'm not sure. But right now, from my understanding, this order is signed to deliver, and Steve is under this restraining order. If he violates it, he can be held accountable in California so, because of full faith and credit. 
I think it'd be interesting. Uh, so people who are, are kind of watching this unfold in real time to uh, collect any evidence that you see that uh, Steve may be continuing the behavior uh, because with the, the habits of people uh, around him, uh, they're fairly good at trying to cover their tracks. So if you have something very recently where it's evident that he is still continuing uh, this sort of thing, uh, I would suggest, and it would behoove the people who do care for Katie uh, to forward it, uh, you know, take screenshots, recordings and forward it. I'm pretty sure Katie has her email somewhere, uh, put in a Google drive. And so she can forward it to her legal counsel so that uh, when he inevitably violates this or one of the people around him violates it, uh, there will be swift justice. Uh, yeah, Kate, Katie can't say anything, but I did let her know. I just sent her a link uh, that I just thought she might need to know that um, that David Silverman was shown, Steve showed David Silverman all of their private correspondence. Wow. David, Dave admitted that in a Twitter exchange with us. So I thought that was kind of weird. Um, oh, my God. I, you know, it must have made her uncomfortable, but she didn't know about it. So I just sent her a link. Let me let me get Tad a super chat. Tad for five dollars. Um, did they serve the papers to the right address like adults? <laughs> See, um, they attacked my family. Blink if you believe my secret evidence. Oh no. But um, I think they sent this to his attorneys, which you know, which is I think as good as you can get. You know, you sent it to your attorneys because your attorneys usually can take service, especially since they were in the middle of litigation. So it seems to be good enough. And Steve spoke to his attorney, and I think his attorney said, you need to shut the blank up. And yeah, 19 uh, hours ago. Oh, I'm sorry. And no, Blue Blue, Blue just said, um, Steve's long hair and soft hands will, will suit prison. Uh-oh. Go ahead. So 19 hours ago on his anti-Katie Joy Paulson subreddit, uh, Steve posted this whole thing. A number of people have asked me about being served by Katie Joy Paulson. Uh, the FBI the FBI is not knocking at my door. My lawyer can't get Katie to respond. This whole This whole post... It was an hour after that that he got the service, and we saw the message up on Twitter. I've just received re ridiculous. It's great. It's great. paperwork, uh, but that post is still up. I'm looking at it right now. Posted 19 hours yeah. ago by People Steve McRae. Take screenshots of that. Make sure you include the time stamp, <laughs> the time zone. That's, get it all. That, that already happened. But good, 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 good. Wow. I mean, that's that's the only way you're gonna have integrity is by other people outside of Steve's orbit keeping him honest. Uh, unfortunately, the people within his orbit don't have the wherewithal to do so. Uh, you know who you are. So it's uh, it's sad. Like it's sad. It's sad that, and I think that that's kind of like my takeaway from this is that this is when the internet becomes too serious. When uh, you are so desperate not to actually get a job and do something with your fucking life and actually get an education that you have to, like, you are reliant financially upon doing shit like this. Because that fervor that you build up in a community, uh, whether you like the girl or not, it don't matter. Like that's that's fucked up, you know. Yeah. And it's uh, there's yes, there's a bit of irony where the people that I fuck with online and me talking about it, it stays online. That's it. When it starts affecting their real fucking life, that's when I will go and I will contact them. I've contacted G Man privately when shit was actually going down with him. He won't mention that, but he and I are always in contact with one another when there's somebody who crosses the line. And I still have videos showing that that is my line in the sand. So if I am suggesting that this type of behavior be something that we all embody, I have the evidence to show, I have the receipts to show that, yes, I'm the one who also follows that line. A quick, a quick $5 super chat from Carrie H72. Thanks for the $5. Will this help Kyle's case? Kyle has a big, Kyle has a different issue. Kyle's issue is he's got to, he's got to get the, the, he has to show the court that he wasn't served properly. That's, that's the crux of his case. If he can show the court he wasn't served properly, this may help. But if he doesn't get, that's the hurdle. If he doesn't get over that, Kyle, Kyle's in trouble. So he has to show the court that he was not served properly to get the case restarted. That's, and if that happens, then yes. But otherwise, then I don't think no. Just for the for for Joey D, I'll I'll put this link in the chat. But this is a prosecutor's got the full faith and credit and protection orders. It generally it goes through it all the law and everything. So you guys, so you can see exactly. But again, um, you know, don't consider this to be legal advice <laughs> from me. But this, this is, this is, these are some things that we used to use just to say, okay, we have an order of protection from somebody from California or something like that. Here's the laws and stuff that we need to cite 
to um to help us out. So this is this is um in the chat for people who want to just 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 if you're interested in the full faith and credit clause and how it works for for protective orders. Um, I hope so. I hope that's helpful. Sorry, guys. But everybody wants to get into now the law of protective orders because this is so crazy. So how do we get here? That's that that that's going to be the last question. How the hell did we get here? How the hell do we get from being a whole bunch of people who like to sit on on a hangout and just talk about theology to now multiple lawsuits and restraining orders? Like this is one hell of a fucking ride we've been on. I well, mean, when you dock yeah. somebody's kids, you know. When you sit on a live stream with somebody that says, quote, I am sexually assaulting you right now, and you laugh, and you don't call that, that's how you get there. I mean, that's, it's beyond the pale. That's the things that you don't do. I like, you know, the normative definition stuff or, or attacking uh, Steve's ideas on philosophy um, is fine. Everyone can do that. Anyone can do that right now. Question me. Question all of my feelings. Question all of my thoughts. Question all of my statements. That's fine. But when you start showing pictures of my kids and you start saying or getting your proxies to say that they are sexually assaulting you on a live stream on YouTube, that that's the line. There, it's a it's a clear line to me. I don't see any mud at all on this line. It's very very clear where it is. Rest live morals and ethics, man. Morals and ethics. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. No, it's it's an insecurity, but it's an extreme because Steve declined uh, when we first brought him into. And when I say we, when we brought him into this community, mm -hmm. uh, was shown that it he can't take criticism. Anytime anyone question anything about his rationale, he loses it and he removes himself and he finds a group of people that know better. And that's why he has to prop them up and go, look, 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 they I, I can take disagreement. People who can take disagreement don't have to have people propped up to demonstrate yep. that they can take disagreement. But you don't have a crowd of people. And that's why I, I really don't have respect for people who uh, are up underneath Steve. And that's, we even saw some in the chat, people who finally break off uh, from him. They're not critical thinkers at all. They're trying to vicariously live through this bum for whatever reason, I don't know what went wrong in their life, but they identify, I guess, with that every man kind of motif that, that he has going on. But, ignoring the gross uh, issues with integrity and it's okay it's okay until their arbitrary line in the sand gets crossed for some people it's this for some people it's that it, it doesn't really matter but the issue and the unavoidable thing that i keep seeing is that there's nobody in his immediate vicinity to check him and people who have integrity have people in their orbit who will keep them in check. Steve does not. Stupid whore energy. I love you, stupid whore energy. You're going to jail. Yes, true. That's true. You have to say it with gusto. Jail. Yes, you're yeah. going to jail. But I, 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 I think everything that that you guys have been saying is correct, and, and I think it's 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 going to be fascinating to see how this plays out. Because the two questions I want to leave everybody everybody here. Well, first, what's up, Puff? You want to say what? something before 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 we head out? We got maybe another ten minutes. What's up? Yeah, um, it, and this um, sadly, you know, drag. You are kind of correct. You know, in my <laughs> case, it was. You know, like I started to push away from him when this whole thing went down. After you know, he started going after people with the and when NSS went down, right, and uh, then. You know, when I finally called him out on this, like this whole thing that he was going after KJP, right? You know, he started coming after me, you know, about some real personal stuff. And luckily, Drag seen it on Twitter. And he was like, look, man, if you want this to stop, I can help you make it stop. And wow. he, he reached out, he helped me out, and he stopped it from happening, you know. And not really, he didn't even use force, you know. He just was like, look, I can help you out, man, it, because... You know, this I, I'm glad to see you see this guy is not a dude, good dude, you know, but I can help you out. And he did. And drag didn't know me from a bucket of paint. So um, that's, you know, that was my situation. You know, he came after me, something real, real personal, tried to make me feel bad about it. And uh, drag saw that. And he was like, look, man, I don't you know, if you want this to stop, obviously, he probably thought it was wrong, too. He was like, uh, you know, I can help you out. The, I know I know what you're, you're talking about, and I'm not going to talk about that publicly, and it, it was fucked up when I saw it. 
I don't blame people for their mistakes. I blame them for not learning from them. That's, that's, a good point. that's the key thing here. Mm -hmm. People learn from their mistakes. Yep. Uh, and it has, it has little to do with agreeing with me or not. I want people to disagree with me. Please do. Because right. that, that's how you keep people honest. But the kind of shit that McCray and, and his crew of flunkies love to do is, is that um, the personal stuff that does impact folks, the, the, the you know, handout that they may give you in a time of need then becomes leverage to use against you when you have a disagreement over a definition or over something fucking petty, which is crazy. Nobody owes me shit. Not a goddamn thing. If I've helped you, your mom and your daddy, uh, your greasy ass grandma, that does not indebt you to me at any point in time. But that's the kind of shit that McCray and crew love to do. And I was raised better than that. And so for the people like me who know better and who are better, that's why they fear mentioning me most of the time because they know better. So it is what it is. Learning with Suge, $5. I'm enjoying the stream. Loving you guys. Panel, take care. Thank you, Suge. I love the new videos, too. You guys got to check out Learning with Suge. He's got some really good videos up. He's always, he's always making me laugh when I see a yeah, he's notification got good stuff. of Suge. Yeah. Hey, Suge. Um, also, Angry Roach. Angry Roach. Steve um, went on Amber Portwood's show and made fun of the fact that KGP was going to the to get a R O restraining order. Well, I, I bet you he's not laughing now, right? It's one of those things where he may have been laughing before, but ain't nobody laughing now. He is not laughing now. Why? Because his ass is restrained. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just it's straight up. It's oh hold on. Uh oh, Her heretic wants to get inside. Let me let me let, let, let's get let's get one more heretic. You gotta you gotta you gotta get in here quick because we are about to get out of here in like the next five six minutes. But but my last question. To the panel, um, is it's just a simple one. Is do you think, do you really think Steve can hold out for and say if it's two years? Do you think Steve can hold out for two years no. and not harass no. this woman? No, it's not possible, but oh, you guys don't think he has any self-control. I, 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 yeah, I, 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 I think within popcorn. six months he gets caught trying to use a supplicant to use drag's word. Uh, try to use a supplicant to launch attacks against her. Yeah. Right, so Puff says no. What about you, Exile? Is still no, open no. you too? He's going to end up in jail over this. I don't think he's going to last the end of the week. That's my yeah. prediction. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. So, so, so you, so you, you give That's him a my week. Prediction. Yeah. I know, Puff gave him at least six months. What about you, Drag? You think you think you think a couple of days, maybe? <laughs> I think I think it's already been violated. Yeah. And Ooh. that paperwork is in the works if i yeah. had to make a prediction and so uh i'm not saying he's gonna end up in fucking jail in the next you know 10 days or nothing but mm -hmm. i think it's already been done and that his uh legal counsel uh is going to fight furiously to try and contest this so that may hold off any consequences that he is uh overdue for yeah. Oof. this is this is um sinjev um, Sherman, it's, it's ten ten dollar Canadian. See if Minnesota YouTube lawyer Nick Ricchietta. Yeah, I, I watch his stuff. He's pretty good. It's a long oh. live stream though. He's got uh, three four hours worth of live stream. Oh, there. I I know who that is over his mm. beef with uh, Mad Black Atheist. Oh. Yes, yeah. <laughs> did you did you watch that? I did. I didn't see it, but I heard about oh. that. He had some oh. beef with Mad Black Atheist I it from Mad Black Atheist point of view. And man, is it, it got bad. He deleted oh the entire channel over that. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they will we'll comment um, how this plays out in Minnesota. That's true. That's true. And and again, he's probably a better resource for Minnesota law than I am because I don't practice in Minnesota. So, no. but um, <laughs> but this is, you know, I I think at the end of the day. Oh, what about you, Prolib? I forgot to ask you. What do you what do you what do you, what do you, what do you what's, what's the over under on time limit for Steve to break? Well, well do you I, think he'll break it? And if he does, what is the time limit? I'm with Drag. He's already broken it. I put the screenshot up on Drag server actually of the post. Steve's post that's still up and his subreddit that's still up. I mean, he's in violation of it right now. I think here's what I think is going to happen. Uh, you're right. He's there, he's going to fight it. I he's going to do you know the things, get another lawyer, whatever he needs to do to fight it. Um, the judge is going to say, uh, you know, you're not allowed to. Here's the parameters and here's what you have to stick to. And within a week of that hearing, he will he will violate it and he will be. Uh, punished wow yep. well 
I, you know, I don't know. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. I just, I just wanted to say one quick thing. It's sort of like a little trope comment before we hang up. And can I do that right now before you? Yeah, go ahead, say go ahead, go ahead. Okay, here, here it is. Red's rhetoric is a doxing, gutless wonder. Thank mm. you. That's for wow. sure. Oh wow. True statement. Yep. Um, can I ask you a quick question? Just a general question, right? So, sure. Um, we're some we're some basement level Reddit detectives, right? You know, <laughs> um, if we caught him this fast, or if there's people in the community caught him this fast, the court's got to be like way better at it, right? Well, well, don't don't forget. Um, generally, especially with an order like this, it's going to be up to the protected party to go to the to law enforcement and say this person is a violation of this order, and here is the reason why, right? So let let's say for instance, a lot of times when it used to happen in my criminal cases, we would have the victim. Let's say they'll be at work, and the person will show up to the person's work. So then they would call the police and say, "Hey, this guy who's here now is not supposed to be within five miles of me. He's right. He's in the next room." Here's the court order, and then you and I made many. Trust me, I made so many arrests like that. Wait, this guy is right here. Yeah, the guy's standing right here. He's under court order. So that that's what happened. She'll just have to go to law enforcement and say, "I have this court order. Here's the evidence that he's doing it. Now fix it and arrest because of the violation of court order." She so. should just give that information to her attorney and let her attorney make these calls, right? On these on these violations that inevitably will happen. It, it, it all depends on how close they are. Yeah, yeah, the attorney, the attorney will probably be best. But that's 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 that's, that's, that's the way it usually comes when it's the you attorney. Uh, is, does he have a, a, a restraining order against him too? If I'm not mistaken, who the attorney? Yeah, or did I mishear that? No, no, no. The attorney doesn't have a restraining order. It's just it's just okay. against Steve. Um, okay. Les Hemming says um, we've heard of jail jail lawyers, but now jail philosophers. <laughs> <laughs> they, have, they they exist. Believe it or not, they exist. Well, listen, guys, I got to go now teach pre-K because, you know, we're still in quarantine and now we got a curfew and it's uh, it's just madness here in New York. Two things I want to say before I get out of here. Number one, um, black lives do matter. And the shit that's been going, the shit that's been yep. going down for the past X amount of years is crazy. It's unbelievable. Yep. And I understand, you know, I'm not against, you know, protest. I'm all for but I'm definitely not for any type of looting, destroying your own community. That, that's insanity. Yeah. But the, the, the fear, think about this. Um, I, th I think one of my friends who was actually on the force said it perfectly last night as a black man. He said the fear people have suffered the day before yesterday in New York when it was just straight lawlessness, straight lawlessness. And there's, there's no other way to put it. It was straight wilding out. The way people felt downtown during that time is the way black people feel all the time when pulled over by the police. Yeah. The yeah. way pe how people felt helpless, isolated. That's when a police officer pulls over you and you're black. That's yeah. the way you definitely feel. And, 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 and that's what we're trying to kind of sift out as right. of right now. And I think that message is being lost because there's so many different things going on, but that message needs to be conveyed. And I'm sorry to preach to you guys, but it's just the reality in the world we live in. I'll hey, give, it, me, it, it, it's time for people like you to talk and people like me to listen. So we're good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, being in the position that you're in, Nate, as uh, being a black male, uh, being former police officer, and then being uh, for former assistant district attorney, I mean, if, if anybody has a perspective, all how, the, the dynamics of this, right? Yeah, I think you've got all bases covered. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I had, we're I, so lucky we're to have to have you guys. We are really lucky. Uh, well, hey, it, it's you know, it's 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 about time that this happened. I'm just I'm just now concerned because I know the virus is still out there. People are going to be infected. You know, I'm expecting the numbers to explode with the virus. Yeah. So I I know that's going to be a consequence of this, but I think this had to happen. I think it's just happening at the worst possible time, but it had to happen. So, listen, my name is Nate. Thank you for the for for all you guys have joined. Someone's asking when is Steve's court date? Steve doesn't have a court date because he has to go and petition the court that he wants a court date. He may not petition a court to say he wants a court date. And if he doesn't do that, then guess what? He has, he has a restraining order that's good for two years that he cannot break. Most people think that he's not going to be able to do it. <laughs> we'll see. We're going we're gonna to live in the moment. So again, if you're a member, again, all the documents are already on the members channel. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be putting them in there in Discord now too, so people in Discord can get them. And if you guys need anything, um, just let me know. My name is Nate, lawyer, YouTuber for Dragnot, Exile, Puff, and Progressive Liberal. And whatever happened to Heretic? Heretic, you tasked me for a link and never came in.
But we're going to get out of here. Thanks again for watching, everybody. And I'm going to see you guys. Take care. Bye, everybody.